Oh, all right. So I guess everyone has been wondering about my shoes. What happens to that guy's shoes? It's a biking shoes. It connects to, all right, all right. It connects to the pedal. So you'll never leave you again, like some creepy relationship. But it's pretty casual and dry. So if you wanted to leave, you can just disconnect it. Anyway, um, I was born in Taiwan. And before I was born, my parents got divorced. Ah. And when I, uh, when my mother gave my birth and he flew to Japan, uh, to study and also make some money for the family. So once in a while, probably once or twice a year, he came back to Taiwan to see me. So as a child, of course, I want to see your mother, right? But when I was 13, uh, there's another guy with my mom and they came back to Taiwan together and say, hey, we are going to Japan. And this guy is your new father. So it's no. As a child, you want to protect your mom, especially a boy, right? But it failed, obviously. So I went to this place. In that time, I couldn't speak any Japanese. So uh, that was kind of struggling, but I didn't care much because I was 13. And my stepfather kind of a, not really rich, but has some money. So he bought me the video game, like the comics. So I pretty much played on my own. But I didn't want to go to the high school anymore. So I said, I want to quit, because school sucks. Any, anybody like junior high or high school? Well, school sucks, but girls are awesome, I know, right? So I said, I, wanna, I don't want to go to go go to school. And my father said, well, because they are very traditional. He said, if you, if you don't want to go, there's no place for you to live. So I moved out that night and started my life as a 13 years old. And my first job was a butcher. I didn't want to say butcher because people would say, oh, you, you killed animal? When, when you were 13, I mean, 16? No, 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 I was just organized dead meat, right? So when I, when I came back to Taiwan, I would tell people that what I was doing when I was 16, and say, oh, I was selling meat. But do you know what selling meat, meat means in Chinese? My love. And it has a different meaning if you know what I mean. <laughs> All right, so um, I started my own life for 13 years until 28. And I could only speak Japanese at the time. That's very strange. Why? Because uh, during the past 13 years, I only used Japanese. No Chinese around me. So I didn't speak, listen, read, or write any Chinese character at all. So I forgot. And I guess that was the reason uh, no one in Japan recognized me as a foreigner. They thought I'm Japanese. So that day I told my colleagues, uh, hey, um, I gotta quit. Why? Oh, um, I'm gonna move back to Taiwan to learn Chinese. And he said, <laughs> no, I'm serious. But what do you mean move back? They thought I'm Japanese. And the girl said, okay, fine. If you are Japanese, I will give you one million yen. So next day, I brought my passport and show her and say, could I have one million yen? He said, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so uh, the age of 28, I moved back to Taiwan and started learning Mandarin as some of, as some of, some of you here. That was kind of terrible because uh, I was having the cultural shock too. Because Japan and Taiwan is close but kind of different. Because in Japan, nobody uh, will use their cell phone at work unless you're a salesman. And nobody will use like, 
the Messenger, the Microsoft Messenger, or Skype at work. And nobody will eat in while work at, a, at office. So I got into a company as a marketing leader. I thought, no, that's so unacceptable. And we were having a fight. That was a terrible time. And several years later, uh, something happened that urged me to start learning English. And several years later, something happened to me again that uh, I guess that incident was the most, was the day I, was the closest day, um, closest day to death, I guess. Because I went to hiking and I got lost, I was alone, and well, that's another story. But that experience remind, reminded me or also told me that if being alive is the only thing you want and the ultimate thing you need, and there's nothing you, can, you should have afraid of. So after a few weeks, I quit my job, I started my own company. For what? <laughs> no purpose. Because <laughs> I also had, had the idea that if you are in a difficult situation, you've been tougher, and you can appreciate more. Just that simple. So I started my own company and as a sort of marketing consultant for, to help job, Japanese companies to get into the job, um, Chinese market or the opposite. But a month later, I had a really, really good idea. It's like falling in love with some pretty girl. And I started on my like, product and service. It's really related to like a social network service. So a few months, a few months later, I become uh, not Japanese, not Taiwanese. What the hell is this? Okay, pirate. Not, well, I wasn't going to the Caribbean, but you know what I mean. So, Silicon Valley, people will understand what you mean if you, you pull out this flag, because, oh, you're an entrepreneur too. So I went to see San Francisco, but uh, most of the entrepreneurs are poor, unless your family is rich. So I didn't have enough money, I did this. Does anyone know what it was this? No? Couch surfing. Perfect? Right. So I couch surfed and my first stop was Auckland. Now Auckland is a town next to San Francisco if you're from the States, you know me, right? But Auckland is so the notoriously like a dangerous town in the States. Because it's the second most dangerous town, I guess. So this is the host, the brother. And I asked him, hey, the people say Auckland is kind of dangerous. Is that, is that okay? He said, no, no, it's fine. The place we live is totally okay. And this remote is so not okay. What? No, it doesn't, doesn't work. All right, anyway. Uh, the night, they took me to a bar. So we spent like three hours there. And after we back, this is what happened. This is what happened to the host car. And that, that guy is the host. I was like, oh yeah, it's really safe here. And they say, oh, well, it's normal. Like three times a year, it's average. I said, really? Yeah. <laughs> so I asked him, that, can I take a photo and put it on Facebook? Sure. That's what happened. And the next day, I went to a company. Can you guess which company is this? It's not Pokemon. 
Pokemon doesn't have any company. It's LinkedIn. It's LinkedIn. And that guy, well, actually, the friend of mine, uh, he was quite nice to me. And they have a like, family day called In Day. They have in, like every month, they have one In Day, and they can bring their family or friends for free lunch. And like free beer, free wine, free rock climbing. <laughs> and next up is Berkeley. And this is the house I stayed for three nights. So the, the girl, actually this is a girl, and I asked her what happened? Did you like get robbed or something? And she said, yes. So really? I said, oh, but it's fine. So I asked her, what, when did that happen? She said, like, a few months ago. <laughs> a few months ago? And what is this? And she just stopped talking and looked at me like, don't judge me. <laughs> so basically, she's kind of dirty. And they are Haitians, uh, Haitian sisters. Really funny people, really interesting. They are also Mormons. And then stop is San Francisco, the city. And this guy, oh, we met each other at a station called Polo Station, Polo Street. And there's a gap, you know, the close, the gap, there's a big sign of a gap here. So we met on the gap. And I saw the guy who's more, right? And walked towards me. No, it shouldn't be a bad guy, should it? And he's just walking towards me and said, Yo, Daniel, right? So close, and he, his eyes kind of uh, weird and creepy. I don't know what happened, but later I figured. Because I went to his house, the photo of planes. Well, different points, so I realized that it wasn't, you know, we or Mariana. And he asked me, have you ever tried we? I said, no. Do you want to try? Yeah. So he asked me, do you feel like dizzy or hard, uncomfortableness or anything recently? I said, no. And he said, you have to say yes. Then he can legally give me the marijuana. It's medical marijuana. Actually, this, this guy is totally geek, computer geek, and we talked about, well, I'm not computer geek, I'm more like a marketing business, but my team members are. So we talked a lot, and he gave me a lot of uh, opinions and advices about our business. <clears throat> and went to a lot of events, because in San Francisco, Silicon Valley, events are everywhere, every night. Then I flew to the East Coast, New York, well, that was really fun place if you have money, right? And the first night I stayed in the Queens, and we went to some events. And those girls are not hooker; they're just normal people. And we also up to the not top floor, like uh, is it sixty four? Is it? highest floor of uh, the Empire State Building. I don't know, maybe, maybe yes, maybe not. And we have a meet meetup, a meeting at the Empire State Building. And it all seems really fun and fantastic, but no. Well, expect this to you. What happens is if you don't have money, you eat pizza. That's what people say in New York. And we ate pizza. And the pizza was uh, so big, because like half of this, my clothes. And it's $5. And oh, this is the host of the couch surfing. And it's like a beyond the rumbling or anything, it's like like earthquake. And I didn't ask. I didn't say anything. I said, okay, thank you. And that guy was uh, uh, African-American? American-African? African-American. And I got there like 
and the place was south of Brooklyn, and a lot of black people. And I was like, okay, this room is so messy. And he said he's gonna go out with his friends, and he'll he'll bring friends to come home. And I started worrying about my virginity because, you know, because I've seen a lot of movies. But he said, he said, oh no no no, um, actually there are couch surfer too, and there are two girls and the one guy and they're from Germany and France. I said, oh okay. But you know. You never know what will happen if you don't give it a try, because a lot of people say couch surfing is really dangerous. Yeah, it is. I've I've seen not seen, but I've heard some girls that has really really bad experience. But that was fun to me, though. And this my co couch surfers, and these two little girls is from Ukraine and Russia. Really cute. And I thought they're like a twenty-five or six, but actually they're like eighteen and nineteen. So they asked my age. I said, "Don't make a guess." They, well, they failed. Then I told them my real age. They said, "Oh, you're almost as old as my father." <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So I flew back to Japan to continue my entrepreneurial work. I totally forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah,、um, I've been to three countries: 15 years in Japan, 15 days in the States, and like 20 years in Taiwan, and a year being a pirate. And well, entrepreneur, and also before、uh, I was a host, I was also a speaker for some workshop, like training you how to be a better presenter. Or a public speaker, and I'm also blogging things about Taiwan and Japan. I don't know if anyone has seen the photo before. That was kind of a famous article two months ago. And I play a piano, but I'm not a pianist. I just I just couldn't find a better photo, so just <laughs> you know I need four photos. So if you have any question, because they say they're the Q and A session. So if you have any questions, I guess we still have like two or three minutes, right? Right. Okay, no questions. Thank you very much. <laughs>